Hello and welcome to this Interbase Labs. We're going to be talking about how to take your data to mobile and how you can easily achieve that with Interbase as your target. Now, a lot of people use Microsoft SQL Server or Oracle or DB2 or Sybase or whatever on the back end. Now, to actually get your data out to mobile, those databases don't exist out on the mobile platform, specifically Android and iOS that you want to target. So, we're going to show you now how you can easily take um, for example, a SQL Server, and it's exactly the same process for Oracle or the other databases, how you can reverse engineer that into ER Studio and target that then out to Interbase. So here's our mobilization process. So the first stage is we're going to take an existing physical database. We're going to reverse engineer that using ER Studio into the logical model. And then with the logical model, we're then able to easily push that forward into Interbase. So let's get in and have a look at ER Studio in action. Hi, so as Steve mentioned, we're going to reverse engineer a SQL Server database. I'm going to get stuck right into it. So file, new, reverse engineer existing database. I'm going to log in here. I'm going to use a SQL Server database and a native connection. So I'm going to quickly log into the database. I'm going to use our GIM database platform. I'm going to add a, a few additional items here and go next to the menu. So what we're looking at is we can review uh, exactly what we're going to reverse engineer so we can see what it's, it's uh, bringing in. So we've got our broker, client, client transaction, investment, and so forth. Some of these options um, can be used depending on the, the type of database. So for instance, if you had an SAP database and the, the, uh, the relationships are handled by the application, uh, then you can infer those relationships from private keys and foreign keys and so forth. To use the today dictionary functionality, it's important to infer the domain, so it will create a domain for each column. So this is great for reuse and standardization. I'm going to leave the, uh, the diagram layer options as is. The orthogonal uh, one is the, the best one for performance. Leave the rest of the settings the same and, and just click through. Right, so now what we have here is a, um, a reverse engineered diagram. So right now we have the, the logical and the physical diagram. I'm going to rename uh, the physical diagram to SQL Server. So let's just uh, rename that here. And, fr and from here now what we're going to do is we're going to create a, uh, a forward engineered interface database. So what we'll do is we'll start with our logical diagram, right click, and we select the generate uh, physical model. We're going to choose the correct database platform here, so it's the uh, Interbase XE3. We'll go ahead and give it the same name. We can choose which options that we can select as we go through the reverse engineer. So things like uh, whether we want to uh, make the, um, the uh, how to generate the physical indexes and whether we want to the uh, uh, foreign keys, how we want them to be resolved, and so forth. So click through this. Now, some of this, um, some of these settings can be used in terms of if you had some submodels in the uh, the logical diagram, you had some text box and shapes. You could also include those in the physical diagram, but with the physical diagram, it tends to be mainly physicalized. So we'll, we'll, we'll bypass some of those options. Okay, so now we've uh, validated that. What we can also do is, um, if for instance uh, we wanted to just do a name check, uh, make sure that character, uh, of characters of a column are no more than 128 characters, we can set those options, run a validation, and it will give us an output of what's actually going on there. So now what we have is a physical um, model of Interbase. The next step here is now to generate that DDL. So again, right-clicking, we're going to do generate database. This time we're going to create a script. 
again we can change the various options you may have different design standards depending on how you operate uh, you can have uh, the, um, the constraints as um, alters instead of generating the constraint um, you know these options you can navigate through and, and determine what's best for you so we're going to leave these as is again as you change the options you can view the SQL so you can preview those as you, as you step through let's go ahead and, and finish that up and here we have, if I just zoom into this, we have the, uh, the correct uh, SQL statements that we can use to uh, run in our uh, interbase session Great, thanks Mohammed. So now we have our script for our new database. Let's go and save this out. Just go File, Save As. And we can call this whatever we want here. Uh, I've just got one that's already in place. So uh, we're now ready to take this script and apply it onto a new blank database so we've got the same data structures in readiness for the data to be moved in. So we're just going to move into our VM now. Okay, so here I have my script. So first thing, let's go into IB Console and let's create a new database. So I'm going to go create this at C. Data. And let's call this um, my new DB. And as we create the database, we can go ahead and make sure that we have embedded user authentication, which then allows us to use encryption, which is obviously very important if we want to have our encrypted database on mobile. And um, we're then able to, to run through, connect in, and follow the steps for creating the encrypted database. So this enables us to set up a system database SO um, password, uh, establish the encryption password and also set up backup encryption keys as well. So I'm just going to call this SOS DSO. Obviously you choose something a lot more secure. Uh, encryption password, I'm just going to use secret password. And encryption name, I'm going to give it my encryption name. Now you can define a cipher, I would suggest using AES 256-bit encryption and using random uh, interval vectors and padding, which is the most secure way of setting this up. Uh, it's always worth having a, a backup encryption key. And once we've got those set up, we now have an encrypted database that we can then go and load into, that we can load our SQL script into. So let's just go and edit this, copy that all in. Or you could just go here, um, file, load, um, you could load a query up from file actually, load script. But all we need to do now is just execute. So great, now we're done. Let's just open this up full and have a look at the tables that we have created. We can go in here, we can see the, the structures and everything created through for us, which is great. We're now ready to start populating our database with the data from our SQL Server.